For this video, I'm going to review Robocop vs. the Terminator on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. As a kid who grew up in the 1980s, I gotta tell you, I absolutely loved the 1987 film Robocop, and I still enjoyed the sequel, uh, 1989's Robocop 2. I did kind of lose interest in the series when Robocop 3 came out in theaters, um, but so did the rest of the world, so I don't feel left out. As for the Terminator franchise, huge fan of that one as well, and Terminator 2 Judgment Day is probably my absolute favorite action film of all time. So it was inevitable that I was eventually going to end up crossing paths with this video game, although I'm surprised it took me this long to actually play it and review it. I will say one last thing about the films before I jump into the video game review. They have really destroyed the Terminator movie franchise. I think Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines was the biggest boneheaded move ever made in film history. All they did was take a hack director and recycle the Terminator 2 storyline. It was a joke. What they should have done is make a Robocop vs. Terminator film instead with Peter Weller as Robocop and Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator. Had they taken the Terminator franchise in that direction back then, I know the series would be a hell of a lot more relevant than it is now. Robocop vs. the Terminator was released by Virgin Interactive for the Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Nintendo Game Boy, and Sega Game Gear. I'm reviewing the Sega Genesis version, which happens to be the best edition of this particular game. It runs just a lot faster on the Sega Genesis, and it just has more animation and special effects than, uh, for example, the Super Nintendo version. This game came out pretty late in the lifespan of the Sega Genesis. Uh, the system debuted in 1989, so by 1993 the system was already kind of in that state of decline where it just kind of was winding down through the, the, the mid to late 90s and was ultimately replaced by the uh, Sega Saturn. I think that might be why I never played this game as a kid. By late 1993, I kind of had my eyes on some of the next generation systems coming out within the next year, including the, the 3DO and the PlayStation 1, so I wasn't really following Sega Genesis games by that point. Looking back in hindsight, I really did drop the ball back then, because this game is so good at translating the Robocop universe into a video game. It totally has the right atmosphere and vibe of the 1987 film. I don't think there's a better Robocop game out there. This premise is just perfectly suited for platforming, side-scrolling action, and the, this has got to be the most gory, bloody, violent, disgusting video game ever made on the 16-bit era. Uh, it's just incredible. It makes, it makes Mortal Kombat look kind of tame by comparison. But uh, the game is just amazing. There's so many iconic characters in here. You get to fight the ED-209 as well as Robocop 2 from the Robocop films, as well as facing off several Terminators from the Terminator franchise. And I know some people were kind of upset by the fact that Robocop beats up on multiple Terminators, so that would imply that Robocop's just a much stronger machine than the Terminators ever were. But that really isn't a shock to me, because the Terminator almost always was destroyed by the end of every film, whereas Robocop keeps coming back for sequels, so, I mean... It's not really rocket science that um, the Robocop is a little more durable and versatile. So the storyline is pretty straightforward. You know, it was based on a graphic novel that came out a couple years before the video game. And basically, the, the long and short is Skynet was using Robocop's technology to evolve and become the big dominant force in the future war. So Skynet sent a couple Terminators back in time to retrieve the Robocop technology to make that whole process happen. So a couple things I'll point out about this game is, number one, you can tell this game was intended for uh, older teenagers and adults. I mean, the game is very PG-13, if not pushing R-rated status for all the violence and blood and guts. Another thing I'll point out is you desperately need those power-ups on the guns uh, to, to be able to uh, beat the bosses. The game has a ridiculous difficulty level, and if you're not powered up when you go into those boss levels, man, you are toast. And it's still really hard even when you have the powered up guns, to be honest. The boss levels are pretty intense. It's hard to progress on certain levels of this game. I really am somewhat frustrated with myself that it took me 20 years to discover and buy this game. It's just so good and it really does push the Genesis hardware and kind of blurs the lines between Neo Geo and Genesis. I, I also have a Neo Geo and that machine is known for pushing these big 2D sprites. And this game, if you didn't tell me it was on the Sega Genesis, I would assume it was on a Neo Geo because of the huge sprites and it just feels like an SNK game almost an execution. If you had told me that the same team that made the Metal Slug games made this one, I would completely believe you and it does have kind of that feel. I guess I shouldn't be shocked that Virgin developed this game for the Sega Genesis 
they have some of the best looking games on the Sega Genesis. Uh, the graphics and animation are top notch in almost everything they've produced. Uh, the one that comes to mind off the top of my head is Cool Spot. I played Cool Spot for hours and was always thoroughly impressed with the platforming action on that game. When I have friends over who are always curious about the Sega Genesis and maybe haven't experienced it in a while, this is one of the first games I'll pop in to uh, show them just uh, the, the graphics prowess of this particular machine and people are just shocked at uh, how colorful this game is despite uh, the Genesis limited color palette. So what's the bottom line for Robocop vs Terminator on the Sega Genesis? I'm going to give this an overall score of 8.5 out of 10. It's really good, but I took one point off for a lack of a two-player co-op mode. I think this game would be even more fun if you could team up with your friend and take on all these enemies uh, two-player like you could in a lot of the Robocop arcade games. So I think that was a missed opportunity. I think uh, the two-player co-op mode of Streets of Rage is why people still talk about that game every day in the Genesis forums. But uh, Robocop vs. Terminator is largely forgotten and never mentioned. I'm also taking off a half point for the difficulty level. It's just too hard. The game is way too hard. They crank up the difficulty far too quickly. I mean, by the end of level 2, the game is almost already impossible. Once you get to Robocop 2, man, that boss battle is ridiculous. I think the difficulty level should have progressed a lot slower. And, you know, they should have cranked up the difficulty probably by the end of level 4 instead of level 2. I think uh, the impossibility of this particular game is what turned off a lot of gamers to it, and that's why it didn't sell particularly well uh, when it came out. I'm sure uh, the, the MA13 rating also kind of deterred sales, so overall it wasn't a particularly strong commercial success for Virgin, and I don't even think they make video games anymore just because um, they had so many commercial flops. Would I recommend buying this game for Genesis owners? Sure. Um, the graphics are amazing. The, the sound is excellent. It's got tight controls, great animation, and you're facing off against uh, iconic characters. So, I mean, what's not to love? Well, I'll tell you what's not to love. It's the difficulty. The game is also ridiculously hard. If you are trying to advance or beat the game, you'll find it to be very frustrating and futile. Thanks for joining me on this review of Robocop vs. Terminator. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.